I'm here with Stefan Erst and Robbie. Thank you very much for taking the time. Stefan, you're the director of The Circle. And Robbie and Erst, you are the subjects. And it's a fascinating story. I want to ask, how did you all meet? A funny thing is that my oldest brother, who is gay, knows Ernst and Ravi since many, many years. And so through him, I got to know them as well. But when the two producers asked me to do this film, they did not know about this. And they asked me to do a fiction film based on their story in the 50s, beginning 60s. We wanted to do this as a co-production, but we could not find the money in Germany, so we had to think of something else, and then we came up with this kind of docu-drama that we now found as a, yeah, a way to do this film. And of course, then we got to know each other even better. So, uh, let me ask uh, Ernest and Robbie, what were you thinking when uh, Stefan approached you about the project, that your life was going to be on screen? Well, it was actually um, our wish to do this for a very long time. And then we met uh, the two producers uh, in a gay uh, organization. And uh, as we knew they were film producers, then we said, well, we would like to have our story uh, turned into a film. Because, um, and I, we immediately said, it's not because of our life. It's because of the circle, the clandestine organization of homosexuals in Switzerland and uh, at that time. And we don't want that this goes lost. And so it should be revived in, in uh, the memory of many other people. Uh, well, let me ask, and you know, as you were watching the project uh, progress, what were some of the feelings that you were uh, feeling as you know you're you're recalling everything and you're seeing a, a, your uh, your story being told you know what were some of the the memories and feelings that were being conjured oh we were very touched and uh, the result is beautiful and we are very happy with the young actors to they play our part uh, in years before and uh, we had very good contact also to them and to the whole crew from the film it was a very very good work together but we did we did read only the treatments and could do a little uh, change if uh, something we thought it uh, it could be because of historical um, back background which we knew better uh, that was all and Stefan said, you don't approach when we are filming. And uh, that's what we did. And uh, the young uh, film actors, Robbie and me, they were very glad that uh, they knew we are not there. Yes. They wanted to interpret it their own way. Is Yeah, I knew that this is a difficult thing for an actor if you play a role of somebody that's still alive and even talking in the film later on. So I thought it would help them to know that Ernst and Ruby are not on the set, saying, well, this would have been a little bit different, or things like that. So they were only allowed to come in the second last day of shooting. <laughs> we were shooting these scenes in the teacher's room. And when I once came out, I saw them in front of the monitor watching. And I saw Ernst and tears came down. and he would look at me and say, I don't believe it. It, is, it makes me f uh, remembering so many of these yeah. feelings of anxiety and uh, not feeling comfortable. And you got the atmosphere that well, so he was almost speechless. And of course, there again, we were very happy that we obviously hit the spot. Mm -hmm. well, that, you, you answered what my very next question was, you know, did you feel that you had grasp what they were telling you and so it was more like a, a recreation an actual recreation as if they were telling you point by point as um, as the movie was uh, as you were making the film we were trying to get as close as we could yes mm -hmm. and uh, it was that Ernst and Ruby they had the chance to read the script 
and that was very helpful for me because I was very interested in knowing what more could you add to it and do you feel that this resembles your story at all and it's very very close and one thing for example there is the, our dialect in Zurich and of course it changes uh, over the years and we wanted to have uh, some words that really are from the 50s and so on and, and we found them and Ernst would may, as a, a school teacher would write no this is wrong this is right and we changed it and it's it's nice because it really gives you the feeling also through the language as a yeah you know, you know capturing you know the atmosphere of you know the 50s and you know the uh, how they spoke, like you mentioned, and uh, action, thoughts, and everything. What was the most difficult that you felt was to capture that time and in, the, in their story? Well, somehow it is really difficult. I was born in 61, so I tell a story about a time that I was not here. Um, and the uncertainty, how it, was re how it really was, that was one thing. Well, then I knew they would always talk about the festivities and the balls and the dances that must have been fantastic. So then you start and come up with modern ideas, uh, like in a disco, or what, what, what would make it so, f so... How loud was the music, for example, all of a sudden? You, and we went really and asked again and again, how can you... What do you remember? And then to find out, oh, we have to twist it now uh, to, to find this, that was very interesting. You know, that, that was something I wanted to ask about the cabaret. You know, how it's changed from then to now, because you know, in, in the 50s, like Stefan was saying, you know, it's very different. You know, how was it when you, know, when you were experiencing uh, you know, that during that time? Oh, it's not so a big change, and I change also my program a little bit m more in modern uh, parts and with uh, songs, uh, but the style, uh, it was shown me as a real simple woman or a singer of the cabaret numbers. And I had, uh, I think, the big chance also to have some people in my mind who I can, uh, can I see how they played and they was. And uh, one of these uh, was Marlene Dietrich, of course. And uh, so I think the program of these uh, numbers, they are still very, very with life and, and they live uh, their life, it's, it's good. And I try to do it again, if possible. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. In, the, in the circle he could do this. And, but the cabaret then meant also political uh, texts, which sometimes yes. I did write on him. But nowadays, of course, they're all out. Yeah. Uh, so what rests are the songs and the songs of the 20s and 30s. And it's amazing how nowadays they become popular again. <laughs> yes. Everyone re remembers and relives them. And that's amazing. You know, I wanted to ask you, uh, when, when you're entering that world and you, know, you were there, how difficult was it? You know, when you were in the cabaret, everyone was of like-minded, uh, like-minded. But when you left, it was a different world. You know, how was that transition for you when you were, you know, uh, you know, going out and about? Yes, it's like switching over into a quite different way of dress. And uh, it's the casual, everyday gray, or it's the bloomy, um, well, that's, uh, and when you start uh, knowing you are gay, then you also start acting in two lives. You are leading a double life because uh, you know exactly this is something you can't tell. It was for us like this. You can't tell to anybody else. And so this is a secret which, keep, which I keep for myself. And uh, so 
um, sometimes I uh, I live up to the secret, and most of the time I live like uh, one who one thinks I have to be. Yeah, yeah. you know, you know uh, Stefan, I wanted to ask you. You know, today, you know, the world is so much more open, and in the film, you have to you know reflect the time. How difficult was that as a filmmaker? You know, showing uh, you know the the difference. How did you capture that? <clears throat> Well, one thing is I come from a quite religious background, so with my brother I would uh, experience a lot of that, uh, that narrowness uh, in the 60s, early 70s. It still was many things. So I, I had on one side I knew that atmosphere, and and on the other side I'm unfortunately I'm quite suspicious how open we really are today. I mean, there's one thing living in an urban society and uh, where all of a sudden you find out many people in the media or in the show business are gay or lesbian and so on, but then there still exists the other areas, uh, the suburbs and uh, further out and other countries and so, and we know that things can change very easily again. And I'm always really suspicious when people say, no, it's it's so fine now and everything is no problem at all it still is uh, underneath uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. was was it uh, difficult to uh, to kind of relive that you know now you can you be in Los Angeles walk around be who you are but, you know when when you're watching the film do you remember how difficult the times were back yes. then yes because in the film it, it shown very natural and very good and so we are touched and sometimes we tremble and uh, even tears came off and the two young actors they are very good in our role yes. and uh, of course it is a big chance to be here uh, with uh, this film Amazing. And we are very happy. Yeah. Also. Yeah. No, that's, that's amazing. Uh, how, about, how about you? How, how did it feel, you know, watching the film and seeing how difficult it was back then and now it's, you know, you can live your life and you got to see a little bit of a change? Yes, we see, of course. We see a big change. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. And otherwise, uh, Switzerland would not uh, have chosen this film for the Oscars. This, this was even 10 years ago, unthinkable. And yes. that, that the, uh, the, the Swiss Consul General, uh, he would um, he, he will make um, an arrangement um, uh, at, at the uh, Consul General uh, with us and tell you openly, well, these two, they live this and this sort of life and this is accepted and, and uh, you're all here uh, for, te for asking questions. So, uh, this is something, well, it, 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 it's like a fairy tale. Yes. Wow, very nicely put. Very nicely put. It, 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 Stefan, that, well, you, you guys are leading right up to my questions. I was going to ask about, uh, you know, what you were thinking and, and feeling when, you know, they let you know that this was coming up for an Oscar, you know, to, this whole process, you know, what was, you know, what was your thought? You know, everyone dreams of my film will be in the Oscars, but, you know, here, you know, here you are, you know, you're on the process, on the road. How was that? You know, what was going through your mind? When I heard it, I just had to laugh. I couldn't stop. <laughs> it was so unbelievable, yes. Very, very nice, of course. Um, we sort of had a hint that it might happen because uh, the world premiere of this film was at the Berlinale. And there we won the Teddy Award, which is sometimes considered to be like the LGBT Oscar. Mm -hmm. And we at the same time also got the Audience Award. And this has never happened so far. So for this was for us also like a fairy tale. To win both these awards had to do with what we really aimed at. That this is a film, of course, for gay and lesbian people, but at the same time it is a film for everybody. And not a, a film for the gay community at all. Uh, maybe it's even much more important for the other part of society. Mm -hmm. So um, hearing that this film got chosen also was in this respect a fantastic film and a very uh, a fantastic thing and a very nice thing that the uh, Swiss government 
had uh, the courage also to choose this film. Yeah, Ernest and, and Robbie, and how about you? You know, you, you know, here you are uh, on this path. You know, and in a short time, you could be holding an Oscar in your hand for a story that's about your life. You know, and I, I can't even imagine. You know, what you would be thinking and feeling. Well, we don't dare uh, even thinking of an Oscar. Um, it's enough wonderful just to be here, um, like we are here at the moment. But. We know, and we've made the experience, only three weeks ago we were in Ukraine, in Kiev, and uh, the film was shown in a beautiful old cinema, and lots of people were there, and there was a long Q&A, and it went all over midnight, nearly to one o'clock in the morning, and 24 hours later, homophobic people came along, and they burned the theatre down. And this is the situation. And uh, people from there, they said, well, your film shows us a way into a faraway future, which has become reality to you. But for us, it's a long way to go Again. still. And in the Western part of Europe, they, and in Berlin also, people were scared about what happens in the East of Europe. And they came along in the street in Berlin in February, and they recognized us both. And they said, they said well, we've seen the film, and uh, this, we are so happy, because it's the right moment now. Everybody talks about Sochi and talks about the, the policy, the homophobic policy of Putin in Russia. And this makes us scared. And now this film comes and we we think oh wonderful wonderful it's a relief yes yes well, you know that's it, it, it's amazing when you hear stories like that you know that you know things still happen like that you know just just a couple more questions i do want to ask what you would like the audience to walk away with from the film you know at the end um, to continue you know, a broader conversation to, you know, of course, they're going to be talking about, you know, your lives, the film, but, you know, but what would you like them to walk away with? Well, you know, for each of you. I can say one, one thing, a good friend of mine from Barcelona, and she's in her 70s, she came all the way to Zurich to watch the film. That was touching. And at the end of the film, uh, she would tell me, listen, until now, I never really got close to this topic of homosexuality, for me it was always just labeled as sin. And I had the feeling something is wrong with this, but I did not care asking. And now after I've seen this film, I realize it's something else, it's love. And so the film is a huge gift for me and my generation. And when I heard this, I was impressed, and I think that's one of the biggest gifts I could hear after this film. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. That's amazing. And, and how, how about uh, Ernest, Robbie? You, you what, what would you like? Um, what would you like the audience to walk away with, or you know, for for yourselves? You know, what do you walk away with? Yes, well, the fi a film is a sort of uh, of uh, media when you when the audience it comes like a dream. It comes part of your your own when you're there. And when you remember the film, then it's, it, it becomes like a sort, yes, of remembrance of your own life. And it, it changes your mind, you get more open. That is exactly what we, what, what we want. And what the film makes, uh, because it's so well made by Stefan. Yeah. Yeah. And it shows our life, it is love and poor love and that we want to make a message to the public oh they are no special they're normal men and normal life and uh, but anyway something special and to be here it is a great great impression and we are very happy yeah, it, that here in Los Angeles now. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.